Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to pick the right speeds from your internet service provider for you and your family so that you're not overpaying, but you are getting enough speed depending on what you use your internet for. Now, before we get moving, I do wanna make sure that we define a couple of terms. There's two terms that we're gonna be using later in this video. Uh, the first is called bandwidth. So in case you don't know, the word bandwidth just means how much data can you upload or, or download uh, in a given time frame. So that's the word bandwidth. And the other word that we're gonna be using later is latency. Latency means the time between sending a signal from point A to point B. So latency is a unit of, it uses time to measure how high your latency is. And as you can see, internet plans are most frequently sold by showing you upload and download limit ceilings. So this plan might have up to X amount of megabits per second upload. And this plan might have up to blank amount of megabits per second download. Knowing what your needs are is critical to making sure that you pick the right plan. Another tricky thing to remember is that bandwidth, which as we mentioned, is just how much data over time you can send receive. Bandwidth is commonly measured in bits per second. And if you're not super familiar with the computing world, you have bits and you have bytes. And a bit is just one little signal and a byte are eight bits. Uh, so it's every time someone says a byte, they're saying eight bits. And it's confusing because the internet service providers sell their plans in units of bits per second, megabits per second. But when you're thinking about how big files are, like when you look at your computer's file system and you see how big a file is, that's usually measured in bytes. So you have to do a little bit of conversion to know sort of how the bandwidth relates to big files. Like if you've got a file that's one megabyte large, that's actually eight megabits large. So when you say, I wanna download a one megabyte file in one second, that means you need to have eight megabits per second bandwidth to download that file in one second. The first thing that you should do when going through this process of picking a plan is write down everything that you and your family does in your household. No, seriously, get a pen and write down everything that you use the internet for in your house. Things like Netflix, gaming, conference calls using Zoom, FaceTime, file sharing, internet-based TV like Sling, YouTube TV, etc. You know, each of those things uses a certain amount of bandwidth. In the description, I'll post a bunch of common uses and like the associated bandwidth uses of them so you can use that in your calculations. But write down everything that you use the internet for and how many of them, this is important, note how many of them do you use at the same time? Because we're trying to find the, of all of these different slivers, of these different ways that you use your internet, what combinations of them that you use at the same time, that is gonna be the ceiling. That's gonna be the high number of bandwidth that we want to make sure you're paying for so that you, you're never troubled and you're never stopped from using one of your applications. And keep in mind, the upload limit that you see will be much lower than your download limit. And that's common, don't worry about that. That's because for non-business people, non-businesses rather, people aren't typically hosting a lot of content, sending it out, right? That's upload. You're, everyone's consuming content. We're downloading things constantly through Netflix and video games and video, YouTube, etc. That's all video coming in, that's download. Not commonly do you see people uploading a ton of content. So what these companies have tried to do, like Cox Communications, Comcast, et cetera, what they, what they do is, it, rather than giving you unlimited upload, uh, they, if you want a, la a larger upload limit, you have to pay some more money because they don't want people hosting their businesses from their homes. They want, if you're gonna do that, they want you to pay more money, like a business tier plan. So don't be you know, scared when you see that a plan has a thousand megabits per second download, which is great, and then a 10 megabit per second upload. 
that's not wrong and it's fine. You shouldn't need more than 10 megabits per second upload anyway, unless you're doing some serious file sharing and uploading. So my advice is to underestimate the amount that you'll use. The internet service providers will have you believe that you should really overestimate to upsell you on the more expensive plans. However, in reality, your eyes can only look at one thing at a time. And the odds that you're using five things at the same time, there's just not high. So earlier when I said, count how many things you'll be doing simultaneously, be realistic about that and don't think that they'll all be used at the same time because they won't and you're gonna save mad money when you do it this way. If you just assume that everything can be used at the same time, then you're gonna end up paying an arm and a leg for your internet. Let me give you my personal example so that you know kind of how to start yours uh, off with. So I stream Netflix in 4K. I play tons of video games. I download lots of movies. I stream lots of music, Spotify. I FaceTime with my family. But I don't need more than 40 or 50 megabits per second. Because at most, my wife and I are doing two of those things at the same time. I can't be FaceTiming and streaming music. I guess I could, but it wouldn't be a pleasant FaceTime call, would it? And the odds also are that we're doing those things together. So it's not like we're both doing two things at the same time separately. So for me, all of those things only adds up to 40 or 50 baseline needs of bandwidth. Okay, so now that you've calculated roughly what the number is that you think you'll need for your bandwidth, let's talk plans. You can use a couple of different websites that will compare plans for your area, or at the very least, they'll tell you which providers are in your area, and I'll link those in the description below. Hopefully your area is covered in those services. If that doesn't help you, if you live like on an apartment complex or something, you can ask your your manager there, or if you're gonna be moving, ask the new property manager for what the providers are that are available to you. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Now this is interesting. The pricing on plans depends greatly on where you live. Even from the same company, plans in, for example, Las Vegas for 50 megabits per second are this much. And plans for the same speed, 50 megabits per second, in Chesapeake, Virginia, are this much. So don't just assume because you know someone in a city somewhere else pays blank for whatever their plan is, that it will cost the same for you. You should really do your research. The infrastructure that the internet service providers like Comcast has to set up is more or less expensive depending on the local municipalities, laws, and restrictions. So it may be very cheap for Comcast to wire, for example, Kansas City, Missouri with fiber optic cable so they don't have to charge as much for that service. But then if you're in New York City, it's going to cost a lot of money to try and lay new cable down. So they're going to charge uh, proportionately there. So the same plan in two different places can cost a largely different number. You'll have many options usually between a few different types of internet providers, okay? So you'll have, there's a few key types of, of high-speed internet that you should be aware of. The first and most common is called cable. Cable providers like Cox, Comcast, Charter, Spectrum, Time Warner, those are all cable internet providers. Then you also have these things called fiber optic cable providers like Verizon Fios uh, and Google Fi. There are these other companies out there, Google Fiber, that do fiber optic. And we'll talk about these in a second. And there's a couple more types. Next would be DSL, which is a much slower but more widely available type of service across especially the rural parts of America. And lastly, satellite internet. And satellite is kind of the newest one on the scene. New, it's not that new now, but it's definitely relatively the newest option. So the if we talk, if we go into the cable and fiber ones, those two are going to be similarly priced if you even have both of them in your area. The fiber optic will almost always have the fastest possible speeds. So if you are super high need, then fiber optic is going to probably be your best bet. But I'm sure that's not the vast majority of you all. If you live in a more remote area, you'll probably have access to 
DSL, as I mentioned, uh, which uses your phone line. It's a pretty old technology, but it's still widely used by a lot of people that don't yet have access to broadband cable Fios internet. And what's interesting is that DSL, the prices for DSL vary significantly. If you're in an area where DSL is your only option, they may charge you more than some people in an urban city get charged for fiber optic. If you're in the middle of nowhere and your DSL plan is offering 10 megabits per second, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised to see that for $50 a month versus a plan when you're living in the middle of a city, you'll see a DSL provider offer that same plan for seven to $10 a month. It's just based on competition in that sense. There's no one to compete with, so they have no reason to charge you lower prices. Satellite internet is the most unique, and to me the most interesting. With satellite internet, people living in remote places can get some pretty good speeds, though the prices usually are not cheap. There are two significant caveats to using satellite internet. The first caveat for satellite internet would be data caps. So like satellites can only handle a certain amount of traffic at any given moment, and that's a pretty big bottleneck for them. So in order to try and reduce the load on satellites, they really want people to not use them that much, which is kind of counterintuitive. But in order to accomplish that while still giving you the fast speeds you need when you need it, what they try to do is give you a cap on how much you can use in a month. So frequently you'll see data cap plans that are very good speeds with satellite, but they only let you download 200 gigabytes in a month. And as soon as you hit that number, they slow your internet down, they, what's called throttling. They throttle your internet down to a very low speed. You get 200 gigabytes in that month at a good speed, but you need to be careful to use them intelligently. So the second caveat for using satellite internet goes back to that word I talked about at the beginning, latency. So by the nature of how satellite internet works, where it goes from the ground, your house, to the satellite, satellite then back down to whatever destination website you're looking for, that website responds, traffic goes back to the satellite, and then back to your house. So due to the nature of that long time in the air, it just takes a long time for the, the data to get back to you. So the late latency for satellite internet is very high, which means having real-time conversations like using FaceTime or video chat is extremely difficult because it can often take one to two seconds before you see anything come back from what you're talking to. If you're on FaceTime, there might be a two second delay between when you're talking to your family member and when you see them respond, which is not great. Not a lot of people are that patient with FaceTime as it is, let alone adding a two second delay. So know what your use case is. If you're gonna be doing a lot of communications, satellite internet is gonna be difficult for real time communications. If you are a gamer that plays a lot of multiplayer games, or maybe you, you have a family member who plays a lot of multiplayer games, just know that satellite internet is a death sentence. You absolutely cannot play multiplayer games using satellite internet. It's off the table because of the latency. And gamers might know this term more as ping. Depending on how long it takes your Xbox, your computer, your console to communicate with the game server and then come back, that's your ping, it's gonna be skyrocketing through the roof. It won't be possible to play multiplayer games over satellite internet. Okay, last thing, make sure you're looking at the fine print. When you're on these websites comparing the plans or even on the website of the specific provider, looking at their plan can sometimes be deceiving. They might show you, here's a plan, here's a great plan for $60 a month for whatever speed you want. But then in the fine print, after you go through the rigmarole of signing up, they'll be like, by the way, this is only the price for the first year. After the first year, it's gonna go up to twice as much or whatever it goes up to. Some people like to roll the dice, pay the first year's price, and then afterwards they call and threaten to cancel unless they get to keep 
paying their old rate. Some people do that. Other people just look for a cheaper plan that doesn't have the fine print that increases the price after a certain amount of time. I have never called and had the gall to tell them to lower my price, but maybe I should, and maybe you should. So this is just a little bit, but I hope that it helps you and your family make an informed choice about what kind of internet you need and what you should purchase. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.